Hey, today I'm going to run you through Bamboo Companion for iPhone. Let's get started. First we'll open the app and it's going to give you a little introduction to what the app is all about. So it's designed to be a private alternative to Bamboo Cloud and it will not work if you're logged into Bamboo Cloud. You must be connected to the same Wi-Fi network on your iPhone as you are on your 3D printer and it's designed when your 3D printer is in LAN only mode. So let's hit next and we'll add a printer. So you can give it a nickname here, so you might just call it Cool Printer. Um, and if you do not have any nickname, then it's basically just gonna be empty and it will use the name of the printer. You can swap through different models and that's all customizable. Um, and you can enable or disable an AMS. So as you can see here, we're using a Bamboo A1. So I'm gonna select Bamboo A1 and I do have an AMS. So then I'm gonna hit next. Now these are the three key bits of information that allow everything to work. So what we're going to do to get started is just pop into the printer and press setting and then go down here to LAN only mode. Now we just want to make sure that LAN only mode is on and you'll see these two bits of information here. One is your IP address and one is your access code. So in the app we want to select IP address and just write that in. Um, this ensures that the phone can talk to the printer, no worries. And then we're going to pop in the access code. Um, this is always just a number and away we go. Now the last thing we need is serial number. So on the A1 to do this you basically just want to go into settings and then you go up and then you select device which is on page one. So it's settings page one of four device. And then you see the printer serial number is just rolling here. So that can make it a little hard to read because it's a longer number and I'm just gonna paste it in here. Allow paste. And then I'm just gonna go back on there. Now once you've got all of this in, you select add printer. And you'll see here the printer's been added and then the phone is going to ask you, would you like to find devices on the local network? And I'm gonna press allow. Now I can swipe down out of this list and I'll see I get a green symbol in the top right for data and for camera. And now my phone is connected to the printer. Now this is essentially what the interface looks like. We've got four tabs down at the bottom. There's status, control, files and settings. In status, this is designed for you just to monitor a print. So you've got no file loaded and it will tell you what the printer status is. This is useful when you're printing. You get an overview of the AMS. So you see here we've got black PET G, white PET G and yellow PET G, which is exactly what we can see here on the AMS. Um, hot end temperatures, so it kind of tells you what it is currently and the target temperature. And then you've got readouts of the percentage of all of your fans. And you can see here you've got a nozzle type. The SD card here is in. Um, and then we've got our Wi-Fi strength. Now in control, this is where we can do some cool things in terms of modifying the printer. So what I'm going to start with is homing it. So if I, in this movement section, I'm going to tap the home button. And we can see there the printer starts moving and homing the X and the Y axis. So that's homed X and Y, and then we'll hit home Z. Now when you home Z, it's automatically gonna home X and Y as well, just to ensure that you don't get any crashes. So it'll pop down to the middle, and then just touch the, the build play, and you'll be good to go. And you can see the camera feed live updating here as it's doing the homing process. Now once it's homed, you've got some options to control the movement. So you can select here different increments of movement. So the default is 10, and then if I tap up, it's gonna move up, up, left, right. I can move back and forward. I can change to 50 mil and it'll do a bigger movement. So that's really cool to have those controls right there. We can start modifying the temperature. So I might select hot end and I'll say, let's preheat it to 250 degrees Celsius. So you get a little loading indicator and that'll indicate that the hot end message is being sent. And now you can see the hot end temperature starts raising. And we can do a similar for bed temp. So we can select the bed temp, set it to 70, set, and it will start heating. Sends a message and now it's updated. Um, so if you go over to the status tab, you will see there, it's basically showing you um, hot end target temperature and bed temperature. 
Um, so the idea is that the status tab is used for monitoring a print. You actually can't modify anything in here. It's just for looking. And then control tab is where you can kind of send some things to the printer. Um, so once the hot end's up at a reasonable temperature, you know, we probably want to be at least on 200, you can start dealing with the retract and extrude here. So um, you can select 1 mil, 5 mil or 10 mil, and you'll basically be able to extrude that from your printer. Um, so let me select 5 mil and it's at 210, so I should see some stuff come out the nozzle now. So if I hit extrude, the extruder moves. And you can see it moving there. It's tricky on the camera, but it's super close. But you can see that dial moving when I hit extrude. And then you should start seeing a whole bunch of filament coming out the bottom shortly. Um, but anyway, that's a nice way just to send retract and extrude messages to your printer and kind of test some filaments. Now, if you want to turn off the current heating, um, you can literally tap hot end, type zero, set, bed, zero, set and that's essentially turned off the heating. Um, we can also control the chamber light. So if I turn that off, it'll go off. And then if I turn that on, it'll go on. Um, and then you can also change the print speeds here. So we could go sport and that will change it to sport mode. And then it will tell you the percentage that sport mode performs at. And these can be done real time while you are printing. The other cool thing is that there's a full file browser for all the contents of your SD card. So if you go files, um, basically it's going to load the root directory of your SD card, which you can see here, and you can browse all of your stuff. So essentially the way the folder structure is set up is you've basically got all the folders that Bamboo provide. And then every time you send something to the 3D printer, a print file, it'll save the 3MF here in the root directory. Um, if you go up to cache, it will essentially save the G code of those 3MF files. But the best way to work with sending a print to the printer is by using any of these 3MF files. But we'll get back to that shortly. Um, some other files of interest are time lapse. So if you enabled a time lapse recording, when you are in here, you can essentially see videos that the um, time lapse videos that the printer's recorded. You can go thumbnail, and this will be a thumbnail of all those time lapses. And if you wanted to load one of those, you can just tap it, and it's going to ask larger files may take a while to download. Do you want to download? You can press download, and it will download from the 3D printer to your phone. And there you go. You've got the print image there that is basically the end end of a time lapse. What this app will do is when you press download to download a file, um, it will save to a local cache. So now if I select that again, it doesn't need to download again. And from settings cache, you can see the cache here. So you can basically clear it manually or you can set how many days. And every time the app opens, it will clear the cache. So now if I went to download that again, it will need to download it again. Um, and once it's downloaded, you can view it. And once you've been able to view it, you can share it. Um, and if you, you can download any of these files, AVI movie files, if you go cache, you can look at the G code. So if I went here um, and I picked a small G code file, so say this one, 2.1 megabytes, and I hit download, it's going to download. Now it's going to give you a warning saying if you cancel, this will crash the 3D printer. This is due to Bamboo's implementation of their firmware. If you're sending a file over FTP, which is how this works, it will um, crash the printer if you cancel it. Um, so that's just a warning. There's no way that I can see to get around that. Now, once you've downloaded the G code, you can actually just browse the G code file here. Um, and then if you need to save it locally, you can save it. When you are selecting 3MF files, you can pretty much go into here and you could select, you know, cookie cutter heart. And it's going to say it's a 3MF, so it knows, hey, do you want to download it or do you want to print it? So if you select print, um, it's going to give you some options to send that to the printer and you can enable or disable bed leveling, flow dynamics, time lapse and enable or disable the AMS. And then you can go print. Now I'm going to jump over to status for monitoring and you can see now it's updated to preparing. Um, so that's just the printer loading up the file. Now you can see that the um, file number is sent. And there we've got our, um, our starting sound and then it tells me time remaining, when it's going to finish, what layer it's currently printing, what g-code line it's currently sent. At the moment it's basically doing the home pass. Um, 
and then you can kind of see here the, um, what colors selected. So we're not at the point where the AMS will actually load the filament that happens after homing, but you'll be able to highlight, it'll highlight which filament is selected down here. Um, and you can see the, the temperatures now, they've got some target temperatures set for homing and it's kind of doing its thing. Um, the other cool options that you have here, which are, can be accessed while you are printing, is you can tap up here to select the printer. And if you need to change any of those settings, you can select edit and away you go. So that's all, all away you go. You can edit that stuff later. Um, if you tap info, what it's going to do is going to check the current firmware from Bamboo's servers and it's going to tell you if your printer's up to date. So that's the current firmware as of Bamboo servers and that's what your printer's on. So it lets you know it's up to date. And then if you tap firmware details here, it'll load the Bamboo website and you can kind of see the kind of firmware history if you need to. Um, another cool thing you can do is you can add a printer. So if I wanted to add a second printer, and say I had um, an X1C, I could select that and I'm just going to make up an IP address because I don't actually have a second printer. And I add that as a printer. Now it's saying I'm connected to the Bamboo X1 Carbon. Of course data and camera is not going to work because I don't actually have that printer. But what I can do is I've got my list of printers down here. So I've got the X1 Carbon and I've got the A1. So if I select the A1 and I say set as current printer, the A1 is now my current printer, it will reconnect. I've got a green data connection and then it's reconnecting to the camera and now I'm back on my A1. So this is a really cool way to be able to swap between different printers. Um, so you can, ba you can basically hook up, you know, five, six, 10 printers and then you'll basically have them all as a list here and you're going to be able to swap between them and monitor them all. You can see now that the printing has started we've got a highlight of what colors in play so you can see that the um, 1, 3 and 4 are a bit smaller and kind of grayed out and number 2 this is our PET-G which is the current filament we're using. So while we're here in a print you can actually go to control and you've got the pause cancel kind of interface. Um, and move is obviously grayed out while you're printing so you cannot mess up your print. Um, so what we could do here is we could hit pause and it will ask you if you want to pause the print. You can go yes and it's going to pause the print. So you'll see the status change up here to paused. And then if you want to resume it, you can resume the print. And um, similarly, you can do the same thing with cancel. So it's printing again, but then if I wanted to cancel, I can just hit cancel print and then it says printing cancelled and you see up here the message saying print cancelled and you go okay cool. Um, so yeah now another really cool thing that I noticed is this is all well and great because it's private and it only works when you're on your local Wi-Fi but I found a way that you can use it when you are not at home. So let's start by swiping down and disabling the Wi-Fi. I'm going to just exit out of the app and I'm going to open up tail scale. Now I'm going to hit connect I've obviously set all this up and I'm going to do another tutorial where I run you through setting up tail scale. Um, but this will let me, you can see it connects to the VPN up in the top right. And this will let me access my 3D printer when I'm not at home. So you can see up here in the top right, I'm on my 4G. Now tail scale takes a little while to start and I've noticed recently in iOS, it's given me this no home relay server warning, but rest assured this is actually connected at the moment. So this is what tail scale looks like once it's loaded. So you'll see that I'm connected to an Ubuntu Pi server, which is just running on a Raspberry Pi and I'm connected to my iPhone 16 Pro, which is this device. So once I go out of this and I reopen Bamboo Companion, you'll see it should connect to data and it should connect to camera. Um, so green light connected to data and green light connected to camera. So I'm in, I'm in on my printer and I'm on 4G, which you can see in the top right. And that allows me to kind of control my printer. So I could go to files here, it will use FTP and it will browse the SD card. And then I can basically do everything I did before, control the printer, look at my status and lets me do all of this when I'm away from home. Another cool thing is I can tap on this image and I get a full screen image of my printer and then I can zoom on in and then I can kind of see the printer doing its stuff.
So this is a handy way just to kind of check out stuff a little bit closer when you're on the run. So yeah, that's a rundown of Bamboo Companion. Um, obviously, another thing I wanted to quickly just touch base with is when you're in here, you can obviously delete files. So it's going to say, do you want to delete that directory? And you can also create new directories and you can also upload files. Um, so yeah, that's basically going to let you slice something, um, output the 3MF, you can upload it to your phone remotely. You can start prints from your phone remotely. You can monitor them remotely. And this will work when you're on your local Wi-Fi or when you're using tail scale and connected to it out of home. Hopefully that gives you a decent rundown of what you can kind of do here. Another cool little option is customize the status screen too. So if you are not concerned about fans, you can hide that. Um, if you don't want misc, you can hide that. You can tap and hold. You might want temperature first and you can go done. And this order is going to change. So you'll see temperature first, then your print status, then the AMFs and the others are gone. And you can customize this for your control screen as well. So you can basically reorder movement and you can put the hot end at the top or you could put the speed at the top if that's more important for you. And then that's all updated. And if you want to revert back, you just go reset to default, done. Reset to default, done and then you're back as you are. So that's a little demo of Bamboo Companion. Hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, there will be an initial beta starting shortly and I look forward to getting your feedback. Thanks.